Anaheim one is here, but who has the most at stake? Hey everybody, Walty Wanders, buckle up and strap in. I got a hard hitting pull, no punches, no sugar coating it, no rainbows or sunshine. I'm just going to give it to you and give it to you straight. We got a good one to um package today. Anaheim one is finally here, and there is some stuff riding on this race. It's always a big, big, massive race. The energy, the butterflies, everything. The silly season, everything's now building up to one big fat gate drop. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about the 450 class because that's the most polarizing class we have with this, you know, pretty much the sport's biggest stars, you know, outside of our wonder boy, Jet Lawrence, who we'll be talking about when he finally gets to the class. He's pretty much got the 250 class on lock. I just don't really think there's a whole lot to talk about there. But the realities are that is going to about to change after Anaheim 1. I believe after this, this gate drop, even the 250 class, we're going to have a lot to die. Jess, maybe even more. Who knows? Maybe Jet has a big get off or a bad race. Who knows? There's going to be a lot of stories, though, to talk about both classes for sure. But today we're going to talk a little bit about the 450s who has the most at stake who's at risk of having a horrible a detrimental a catastrophic Anaheim well we'll take your pick it's like throwing darts at a rider poster you're gonna hit somebody that's got a lot on the line right now but I I think that some of the biggest question marks for me Adam Cincerillo uh, we still don't really know. Is he? A, he's. I think he's clearly not a hundred percent. And this is kind of big. Like this could be it. Like if he can't finish this Anaheim one, like his career is on the line. I mean, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I just. I think you could all agree with that. So we ran a poll on the channel, and we're going to reveal the results of that poll and see where the actual votes are coming in at. Then there's Kickstart Kenny Roxon. That dude's got a big roll of the dice going too. He came in and blindsided the whole industry and Suzuki. Suzuki just all of a sudden, they're scrambling to try to put together this program for Kenny. And it's all about Kenny. You Suzuki, you're now in Kenny's world. Similar to how Honda's in now in and Jet's world. And Honda spent millions and millions of dollars and unable to deliver a championship. And now you got Chase Sexton on his way out, Colt Nichols with a fill-in ride. They're all buying time till they can usher in Jet Lawrence and they're rolling the dice once again to see if somehow he's going to be the one that finally delivers. And they spent a lot of money on Sexton. They spent a lot of money on Roxon and neither one of them have delivered a championship yet. So this is their last chance. Sexton's clearly capable of doing it but let's see how it shakes out if you knew that you were being ushered out for jet lawrence would you go risk it all to give honda the the championship they want maybe maybe not i don't know you probably want to do it for yourself you're gonna get paid a lot of money they would just be the beneficiaries of being able to enjoy the fact that you did it on their bike but i'm sure if you had his choice you'd do it on somebody else's bike but the realities are I want to examine this poll that we asked you guys. What do you guys think? Who's got the most at risk this Anaheim one? And we couldn't put as many riders on there as I would have liked, but we put a few. So let's go ahead and roll that poll, and then we'll meet back here and wrap it up. Let's get started. All right, buckle up and strap in. Hold on to your hats and glasses as we blow the lid off another topic. When asked on the community page of the Walty Wanders MX channel, Who's at risk of having the most disastrous Anaheim one? Eli, Chase, Kenny Boy Roxon, or Adam Cincerillo? Adam Cincerillo comes in with 35%. Overwhelmingly, you guys are saying Adam Cincerillo is at risk of having a horrible Anaheim one. Now, let's get back to the studio so we can wrap this one up. Friends, welcome back. So AC, Adam Cincerillo, it would appear, bro, even between you and Kickstart, which was really about, I don't even know. I just threw this poll together. I threw Eli in there because I don't think Eli's got much to worry about. That guy coming last place and he's solid. 
Kenny Boy comes in last place, though, dude. Wow, there's gonna be there's gonna be a lot. And you know what's so funny is the whole industry right now is just handcuffed. Like I'm, there's not a lot to really report. Today's track map, where we're gonna talk to a couple of washed up old riders that were big in the past. The whoop section doesn't look. We're searching, bros. We're just searching for stuff to run our mouth about until A1. But let me just tell you, bros. Let me tell you right now, when A1, once we have A1, it kicks off, Pandora's box will open. There will be too much to report on before we get to round two. You wouldn't even be able to do multiple videos a day and cover the amount of stuff I believe we're going to see unfold at A1. But you guys say Adam Cincerello is, in fact, at risk of having the most disastrous or more disastrous, we'll say more disastrous race than even kickstart Kenny. But let me tell you, tell you, both those guys got a lot going on. Like I was saying, if Adam doesn't finish this race, my friends, and I'm telling you, he has to finish. I don't care. And he can't be a lapper. He cannot be a lapper and he has to finish the race. If he doesn't finish the race or if he ends up a lapper, I think we're going to basically see no more of him this year. It would be a shocker to me. So that's a pretty big... That's a pretty big roll of the dice going on. And then kickstart. Kickstart Kenny, pretty much the same exact boat. He can't be a lapper. I mean, Kenny, I think, has to put in a finish. He has to put in, at minimum, a top five. Anything outside the top five, for me, will be a bust. Because if he continues to hover around the top 10 and ride around out there and after the amount of money that Suzuki had to buck up to pay, the fact that they had to pull a second semi-truck out just to house Kenny, this would be a massive one. A massive one. And we don't fool yourself, you guys. Kenny has been a lap. Last season, if I remember correctly, there was a couple races where Kenny got lapped. He was a lapper. He is capable of doing that again. He's so, so I think between Kenny and between Adams and Cirillo, those are the two riders right now that have the most, or I shouldn't say the most, uh, the most that comes to mind riding on Anaheim 1. And Anaheim 1 is going to provide some fireworks. And I'm not just talking about opening ceremonies. I'm talking about some massive stuff's going to play out. This year is going to be so historic. From the politics... From the riders, from the teams, from the silly seasons, from everything. This is going to be a story. It's a big, there's a big, big, big cesspool of brewing. And your boy Walty's going to be here to blow the lid off it every step of the way. Because it's not only what you need, it's in fact what you deserve. If you appreciate the content, I'm going to humbly ask you to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment below. I would love to Social media link in the description of this video if you'd like to contact me there. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you're really going to like the next video on your screen. As always, thank you for your time. Don't go over the bars today. I will see you on the next video.